What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dreadlabs and today we're going to be making this. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this liquid chrome effect in Cinema 4D. All right, so the first thing we have to do is make sure that we have a typing ready. And I'm going to make a new project and I'm going to import my own vector. And let's just reset the position on this. So this is what we have so far here. And if you don't want to be making this in Illustrator, you can also grab the text tool here. And a font that I would recommend to you, it's in Adobe CC. So you can use this font and it's called Gergner. And as you can see, you can get some pretty cool results with it. And they look quite bubbly as well. But for now, I'm going to use my own um, well, custom type. I uh, did a sketch of this and my intern did an amazing job turning this into an actual typography. So shout out to her. All right, so the first step that we're going to do is we need to actually make this into a 3D object. And because if we look at this now, it's really flat and that's because it's a spline. So I'm just going to reset this. As you can see in our live render viewer, we're not seeing anything. Just one thing before we start off, I am using Octane here, but you can also use this in a vanilla renderer. And I'm going to show you both methods and how to render this. Bear with me. Now what I'm going to be doing is selecting all of the pods here. And then I'm going to hold all or option on my keyboard and click on the extrude button over here. And for the direction, we're just going to be making sure that it's all in the Z direction. And the offset, we're going to be doing a maybe an offset of 20. Looks quite all right. Maybe a little bit less, maybe like 15. All right. So as you can see, uh, it is 3D now, but it's still kind of harsh and it has hard edges. So let's add some caps. So under the caps tab here, I'm going to be upping the size here a little bit and adding some uh, segments in there as well to make it a little bit softer. As you can see, it looks softer already, but it's still like a little bit, you can kind of see that it's uh, not organic enough yet. So let's collapse all of these. And what we're gonna do is use the volume builder and the volume measure on this. So I'm gonna hold alt or option on my group, hold and click on volume builder. And then I'm gonna hold alt or option again while clicking on the volume measure. And this gives us a weird little blob, and that's because this thing works with voxels, basically like some blocks that glue together this whole thing. If we click on the volume builder and lower the voxel size to, let's say one centimeters, you'll see that we get everything back. So basically the more, you can kind of see what I mean when I turn off the volume measure. These are the blocks, and the smaller I make these blocks, the more detail you'll get. Let's turn the volume measure back on. And as you can see, it looks a little bit, well, organic again, but still we got these hard edges. So what we can do with that is uh, click on here. Under the volume builder, we have the SDF smooth button. And this smoothens out our text a little bit more. You can see it starts gluing some parts together a little bit and we can change it while lowering the voxel distance. And if it's still too thick for you, let's just go back to the extrude. And I think if we change the offset to maybe like five looks a little bit more rounded i guess now it looks a little bit more organic we're basically already finished with our model here so if we go to the grow shading lines display you can kind of see uh what's happening here geometry wise so if you are not satisfied with this we can always uh, add another subdivision surface to this but i wouldn't really recommend it because it doesn't really change that much and lowers the speed of your computer of course looking at this i'm quite happy with this so first i'm going to show you how to do this in uh, octane and in the end of the video i'm going to show you how to do it in the vanilla renderer of cinema 4d under the octane live viewer let's go to objects, HDRI environment, and we're going to need an image texture. And the image texture that I'm going to choose is from Suveki. Um, this basically contains a lot of really cool abstract color palettes. Uh, so shout out to Suveki. You can get this texture pack uh, by going through the link in the description. As an alternative, if you want a free alternative, you can try to make an iridescent texture. Uh, and if you don't know how to do that, there's a video link down below because then in that video, I'm going to show you how to make one for free. Uh, for me, what I'm going to use is, I think, so for me, I'm going to use number nine here. I really like how bright the magentas are in this thing. So as you can see, this basically now makes it so that our environment is this image texture. And now we just need to make sure that our text will reflect this. So I'm going to make a material, octane metallic material. And I'm going to put that on the volume measure. And as you can see, let's just go to the settings here and turn off the environment and the alpha channel, turn on the alpha channel. And it looks really, really glossy. So I think I want to add a little bit of roughness. Just a little bit. You can always like see if we want to rotate our texture a little bit. So there's a little bit more color in there. And let's add a camera. And reset the coordinates. And there you have it. So uh, that's the way to do it in Octane. Let's just click away the Live Hero window. Uh, I'm going to remove the Octane Sky and the Octane Camera for a bit. And let's just add a normal Cinema 4D camera. And we set the positions on this as well. And what I'm going to be doing is hold Alt and R on my keyboard. 
And this basically makes sure that I get a live viewer uh, window from Cinema 4D itself. And as you can see, it's a little bit dark and I'm not sure if that's because of the loading time or that's just because we don't have an HDRI sky in here. But talking about that, let's do that. So under the light tab, so under this tab, you can find sky. And let's add a sky object. And as you can see, it starts already lighting up. Remove the metal object. So I'm gonna make a new default material. I'm gonna be calling this sky. And essentially what I'm gonna be doing is remove the reflectance tab and under the color tab, under the texture, I'm gonna load in the same texture. So this one, the violet group number nine from the Suveki XK Arterial pack. Essentially this now is, we can just put this material on the sky. And as you can see, this basically does the same thing as we did in Octane. So now we just need to make a default material again. And under the color, we'll, uh, we don't need to do anything like that. And under the reflectance, we'll add a reflectance, a GGX one. And for the layer sampling, let's make it a little bit higher. So the sampling subdivisions, we'll put it to maybe six. It's gonna slow down my computer a little bit, but if you're gonna be rendering this, I would recommend to putting this a little bit higher. Um, roughness is fine, I think. Let's just check out what this looks like. And voila, we get pretty much the same result. So let's just do a quick little render of this to make sure that it looks nice. And there you have it. So that's pretty much it, guys. How to create a liquid chrome text in Cinema 4D. So what I never really highlighted on my channel was the uh, volume builder and the volume measure. And it's a really useful tool for modeling. I can create some really cool, interesting results. So I highly encourage you to experiment a little bit with it. Uh, check out what it can do for you because it's not only useful for text, it's also useful for other stuff. Other than that, uh, I think it's just a simple Chrome Material HDRI environment. Another thing that I uh, want to encourage you to do is experiment with the HDRI maps and the images, textures of your environments to create some cool reflections. And like I said, if you want to use one of the assets that I mentioned in this video, you can get them by the link down below. Or if you want to learn how to create these uh, textures yourself, there's also a video tutorial. For that. So before we end the video, I just wanted to let you know that you can get the Cinema 4D files for this video if you become a patron of mine. So by becoming a patron, you'll actually help me out, give you free tutorials on a weekly basis and support the channel in general. Besides getting the Cinema 4D file for this video, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role on the Dreadlabs community server. If you go one tier up, you'll also get access to exclusive tutorials such as how to create a Y2K ray flyer from scratch. So if this is something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description. And if you don't have the budget to support Dreadlabs, of course, that's completely fine. Leaving a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, already does a lot. So with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.